Here's something pretty to look at, and you'll find it in almost any hedgerow. Rose hips. These are dog rose hips, Rosa canina. It's one of the better rose hips to gather because it doesn't have any little hairs on it. It's quite smooth. It feels quite smooth. Some of the other varieties taste very good, but they're covered in quite bristly little hairs. And if you use them, you have to get rid of those hairs by some means or another. Now, a lot of older people remember being paid pocket money to collect these to make rose hip syrup, which was, it was given out to children for vitamin C source during the war and, and for several years after the war. But because I try to live without too much sugar in my world, I've decided I'd do something different with rose hips. And what I do is I gather them and I rub them a bit. All the little sepals come off them. I've got fairly clean hips there and I've got the bits there that can go and then I take them home and I dry them out and I can do that on top of my Rayburn on a tray um, and it takes several days so the Rayburn's not on all the time at the moment or alternatively you could put them on a tray over a radiator or some other permanent heat source and dry them out and then you can make tea out of them if you try and make them out of the hip it doesn't really work but what I do with dried rose hips I will take probably three times as many as that and I will put them in a thermos flask and put really boiling water on them. It's got to be really boiling. So if you're using a, a metal thermos flask you absolutely have to prime it with hot water first otherwise you lose too much heat and then you leave it for about four hours and you shake it up and serve it and you get a wonderful, wonderful flavour, it's sort of aroma of autumn comes off it. It's marvellous stuff. I love it. And that's what I take up a hill with me. A local native product. No sugar. And cost me nothing except a little effort. virtually in this overgrown hedgerow is a blackthorn or sloe and here is here are its fruits these beautiful little plums which sometimes have quite a bloom on them quite a pale bloom and sometimes that washes off to make these very dark fruits if you try eating one unless it's been an exceptionally warm summer it virtually turns your mouth inside out Ugh. <laughs> it really is a strong strong sour flavour with an edge of bitterness as well. It's quite quite challenging flavour. The only good use for these to my knowledge is to make gin from them. Flavoured gin. In the old days when I picked these I used to miss pick them prick them all with a pin before I put them in the pot. But what I do now is pick a whole load of them and shove them in a plastic bag lots of them and put them in the freezer overnight and that cracks them open for you and then you add a little sugar I don't add much and mine's quite astringent some people add quite a lot of sugar and the juices that come out will dissolve the sugar and then you can put them in a jar and add your gin I mean, it's it's a cheats process because you're not making the gin but you're flavoring it up in the most delicious way and if you do it you know in October it will then be ready for Christmas, which is a good time to celebrate this slow gin. <laughs> <laughs>